Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to call this meeting to order and welcome you to Chillicothe City Council. Roll call, Mr. Paulson. Ames. Here. Corcoran. Florima. Here. Gray. Here. Neal. Here. Patrick. Kroll. Here. Tatman. Here. Trutchell. Here. Would you please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The first item on the agenda this evening is the approval of minutes. I trust that the members have had a chance to review. Is there a motion to... Uh, thank you. I lost total track of mine. Is there a motion to accept as presented? Motion made by Mrs. Gray, seconded by Mrs. Neal. Roll call on the motion to accept. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah. The minutes will stand as presented. That takes us to reports of committees. Mrs. Gray. Thank you, President Eleonardo. The Human Resources Committee does not have currently anything on the agenda, but would like to request to waive the three-day receipt rule you have before you an ordinance extending the temporary employment of one seasonal part-time employee within the utilities department through December 31st and declare an emergency. So you should have that legislation in front of you, and at this time I would accept a motion to waive the three-day receipt rule. motion has been made and seconded by Mr. Trutchell. Roll call on the motion to waive the three-day receipt rule. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Crutchell. Yes. Three day receipt has been waived and that will become item number 11 on this evening's agenda. Anything further, Mrs. Gray? No, thank you. Next. Mr. Kroll. I have a couple of items I need to get on here. Um, partially for Safety Service Committee. And also, I'll be filling in for Pat Patrick on utilities. So we'll start off with Safety Service Committee report. Safety Service Committee has three items on tonight's agenda. Item number four, which is at first reading, and is an ordinance to accept and appropriate $3,890.71 um, uh, from hazardous material training reimbursement from the Ross County EMA. At the appropriate time, I will respectfully ask that we please pass, waive the three-read rule so that we can accept this money. Item number five is at first reading and is to authorize the hiring of one firefighter within the Chillicothe Fire Department in order to reduce the cost of overtime. And um, Chief Creed is in the audience tonight. Would you like to speak to this a little? Yeah. I, uh... I spoke about this earlier. Um, that one position currently is costing us about $10,000 a month in overtime and fringes, and a new hire will cost us about $6,000 a month. So each month that I have that employee, it will save the city $4,000. Um, so it's kind of one of those things that it will help the city help the budget overall for us to do that. It balances out our shifts. We're all shifts have the same number of people and reduce the overtime. So I would ask for passage of that. Thank you, sir. Um, at the appropriate time, I will ask that we please waive the three read rule uh, so that we can try to get this firefighter hired. Um, if we do this, we can have a new firefighter um, by the first of the year, you believe? I would be able to get that one probably by the first of December. I've got some in the, in the pipeline that we're getting physical yeah. and sites done on. So that would be appreciated. <laughs> Item number 10 is at first reading and is declaring that certain duty firearms and seized firearms as not needed, um, declaring certain duty firearms and seized firearms as not needed and authorizing the safety service director to trade in said firearms simultaneously with the purchase of new duty firearms for the Chillicothe Police Department. The police department will trade <coughs> in seized firearms and their current service um, firearms, which are made by C and our 40 caliber pistols for 9 millimeter Glock pistols. The purpose of this trade and the purpose of this is to reduce costs over time. The Glocks are less expensive to purchase and maintain. The 9 millimeter ammo is also cheaper than the 40 caliber ammo. 
The deal will not cost the city any additional funds. In fact, it will produce a credit toward, towards the city, which will be used then to purchase additional magazines needed for range and SRT use at no additional cost to the city. The current SIG costs $729 each. So for each officer, we purchase a gun for them um, at, at $729 uh, piece. The Glock is only $405. So as we uh, arm our future officers, we'll be seeing considerable savings by switching to Glock. The 9mm ammo costs about 3 or $4 less per box, so we should see a savings of about $1,600 a year over if we continue at the current rate expended in ammunition yearly, which is mostly spent on um, staying current on the range. This trade does away with also also does away with Smith and Wessons that are used currently by the detectives. So all officers will be trained on the same type of gun, and um, that will um, improve safety because everybody will be familiar with the same type of uh, weapon. Um, the other thing is um, these Glocks are, are being used heavily in the. Um, Academies. So as, as officers are coming up, um, I think it's something, I didn't have the number down, but it's, it's something like over 65% of the police forces now use Glock um, in nine, or 9 millimeters, and that way um, uh, for safety purposes. And they, uh, they work just as well as, with the new ammunition, they work just as well as the 40 calibers. So at the appropriate time, this is actually something that um, the mayor, I believe, already gave the okay for, and they started this process. I would like to ask at the appropriate time that, since this will cost the city nothing um, and uh, benefit us over time, I would ask that we please waive the three-week rule so that we can pass this tonight. As we look at hiring new officers, um, we can hire them on with these less expensive uh, armaments. So uh, that concludes the Safety Service Committee report. Move on to utilities. Pat Patrick is out of town this evening, so I will report on the following items for her. These were discussed in the last utilities committee meeting. Item number six is at first reading and is to appropriate $23,000 for unanticipated expenses for the Guernsey Crossing waterline extension and to cover expenses through the remainder of the 2015 year. We have invoices to pay, and she asks that we would please waive the three-read rule. Item number seven is at first reading, and it reallocates $1,191.96 to replace the stolen concrete saw. This is at first reading, and she would like it to um, continue to receive readings, so we will not waive for that. Item number eight is at first reading and is to appropriate $48,185.87 for patching and paving um, related to the water main break and sewer repairs through the remainder of 2015. We have invoices to pay. And she asks that at the appropriate time we would waive the three-week rule and pass this so those invoices can be dealt with. Um, item number nine is at first reading, and it is granting a permanent easement to Columbia Gas, and she asks that this um, be read and that um, uh, it will only it, it, we will not waive any rules tonight on that. And that concludes my reports. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Other reports. This is great. I wanted to add to the legislation that I introduced this evening that. At the appropriate time, I will ask to waive the three-week rule. Duly noted. Thank, Thank you. you. Are there other committee reports? <clears throat> um, City Services has one item on the agenda tonight, <clears throat> and that's to accept and appropriate $2,813.49. Um, this was money received as the City's uh, proportionate share of the rock salt antitrust litigation settlement fund and um, so that we can use that money um, at the appropriate time I'll ask to wait for the um, 
this item is not on the agenda tonight, but um, you should have a copy of ordinance. Uh, it's the disposal of vehicles. And um, this is to authorize to dispose of city-owned vehicles that are obsolete by placing these vehicles on egov.com e for online auction. Um, there are a total of 24 items on the list to be auctioned. Uh, all this equipment has been out of service for quite a while um, and has all been looked at by our mechanics and deemed to be unrepairable, unusable. Um, because it poses a um, public safety issue um, and the continued deterioration of the uh, storage of this equipment, I ask to, um, I guess first I need to ask to wait three days. Motion's been made and seconded by Mr. Trudgell. We'll call on the motion to wait for three days. <coughs> Ames? Yes. Corcoran? Yes. Florima? Yes. Gray? Yes. Neal? Yes. Prohl? Yes. Tapman? Yes. Cutchell? Yes. That motion carries, and that'll become item number 12 on this evening's agenda. And then, um, at the appropriate time for the reasons stated, I will ask to waive the three ring rule. Um, in addition, uh, there is one other assignment. It is 15. 134, um, and that is, uh, it's in the law director's office, but I just wanted to report on the assignment. Um, it's the, it's to receive insurance reimbursement for items that were stolen during the July burglary. And um, as it got to the law director's office, there was questions about where the money that we received should be appropriated. So that is in the law's director's office. It'll be on the next council agenda. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Neal. Mr. Chapman. Thank you, Madam President. The engineering uh, committee has two items on tonight. The first one is to appropriate uh, $5,983 to cover insurance on the uh, working traffic controllers. This item was already passed previously, but there was no money allocated, so we need to uh, pass this tonight so at the appropriate time. I will ask also to wait three, three days, three, three, we'll get it out sooner or later. Item three, uh, this is the appropriate $4,000 for code enforcement for uh, examinations for uh, the remainder of the calendar year. They've had to actually hire out people to help with uh, the uh, code enforcement of the new buildings and new items going up on North Bridge Street and other places. So we also need to address this and waive the three, three rule tonight. And that concludes our report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Any other committee reports? <coughs> All right. Seeing none, that will take us to reports of officials. Mayor Everson. Thank you, President Alan Margo. Um, first off on the list, we will be having some budget meetings coming up this week. Tomorrow night at 6 a.m. 6 o'clock p.m. The council chambers here will be reviewing the mayor budget, PRD, civil service, and council budgets. Uh, we also have <coughs> a treasurer, auditor, and income tax scheduled for tomorrow night, but that was, that was schedule was made before I realized that uh, Mr. Feeney would be out of town. So we'll patch those in at a later time. And also Thursday, the law director budget and the municipal court budget will be the topics at 6 o'clock. Uh, secondly, I'd like to expand a little bit upon uh, the, the uh, piece of legislation that uh, Mr. Pearl was talking about with regard to firearms. Um, these firearms are um, a good deal for the city. We will be getting a 2300 or $2,500 uh, rebate back from Vance is the place that we always do business purchasing firearms uh, in exchange for our 40, uh, 40 caliber pistols. Typically in, in law enforcement you change out uh, weapons in ten year, every 10 years. These blocks or these uh, SIGs are in their eighth year now and by converting, like uh, Mr. Pearl said, we save on ammo, we save on cost of weapons. Uh, they're more durable because they're composite construction. They give less recoil, therefore more accuracy. 
Uh, this is a good move for the city. 65% of all law enforcement use the 9 millimeter pistol. Uh, the, the ammo belt weighs less for the officers. Uh, it's a good deal. So I would ask uh, council's positive um, vote on that tonight. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Paul Director Thank you, President Eleonardo. Um, the law director's office is currently working with the Chillicothe Police Department to schedule their required training for 2015. We're going to do the uh, search and seizure section for them. I believe we're going to do about 20 hours worth of training. It's, it's because we have OPADA certified trained um, people on my staff. And that concludes my report. <coughs> Thank you for that brief and informative report. There you go. We're going to move to um, audience participation, and uh, Mrs. Ames would like to introduce our first speaker this evening. Thank you. Um, I have invited Mr. Ty Park from the city schools. He is going to speak on the keys to success, which a new, is a new program at CHS that is encouraging uh, students to refrain from using drugs and to be good citizens and display good behavior. So, Mr. Park. Thank you for your time, everyone. I appreciate the opportunity to be here and speak. I'm going to try to make this really quick because I know I've got uh, time here. So uh, this program, again, uh, we all know about the negative attention, negative media uh, that's out there uh, with our drug problem. And it's not just a chill coffee problem, but, um, you know, chill coffee has been in the news uh, quite a bit. And we've had some response uh, from uh, distinguished alumni, uh, Gary Von Kennel, um, who called Mr. Saxon and said, we've got to do something at the school level. Um, and him, he got together with uh, Bill Hernstein and decided to um, try to create a program with a, a wonderful incentive for students to do three basic things. To stay drug free, to uh, get a minimum GPA, which is actually our state athletic requirement, which is, is pretty minimum, uh, and to avoid uh, getting discipline referrals at school and also be good citizens. Um, doing that, they have the opportunity at the end of the year uh, to win, if they volunteer for this program and sign their name on the dotted line, they can win a new car, uh, which which is awesome to have that opportunity. Um, as a parent of young kids, I, you know, I hope this program uh, is sustainable and we have this. Uh, if right now, there's a three-year commitment to this, and our, our kids are excited, those who are signing their name on the line and taking this pledge that they're going to do this. It's, it's an incentive program, so they have the opportunity to receive uh, multiple incentives, and our committees are trying to uh, raise support for that. There are three things that I would ask that you consider uh, here tonight in support of this program. Number one, this is a community deal. Uh, we can't do it without support uh, from community members and we already have so many business people doing so many things to attack this problem on so many levels. Uh, but to start in the schools before addiction begins and before that experimentation begins, uh, that's what we're trying to do. And so I would ask that you consider signing our pledge uh, which we're going to take this. Gary Von Kennel's already got an appointment along with several committee members to go to Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, next week, I believe, to talk to some Congress members to say this is what Chillicothe is doing um, at the schools and this is the community. And so the pledge states that you will be good citizens, that you will refrain from using illicit drugs, illegal drugs, uh, and, and that you will support all programs, not just Keys to Success, all programs that try to promote drug resistance education. Uh, we have Tyler's Light come into the schools. We're doing great things. And currently our registration is at 101. Uh, and you know, uh, at first, you know, I was, I was hoping obviously for very big numbers. I'm very passionate about this as well as you are. You, you are elected officials and, and you are here because you care about our community. And, and, and I, I appreciate that. Our kids, and I was hoping for bigger numbers at first, um, but it's after talking to people who have tried these first year programs, uh, 100 is a great number for a school, and I'm going to celebrate those kids who said, sign me up. I'm going to do this. So a lot of kids who do the right thing anyway might do this easy. I mean, it's a minimum GPA, low standards. They get a chance to win a car. But the kids that don't have the support, the one or two kids that maybe we don't know about that are going to look at their friends and say, you know what, I've got a reason I'm not going to try this right now. That's, that's what this program is about. Uh, those kids who have another reason now, a great reason, you know, to, to avoid that. And I know a lot of you have been touched on, on close levels uh, with addiction. Uh, you know, I've got personal friends that, you know, that first mor moral decision was a poor decision, but then after that, that, that addiction takes hold. We can't arrest our way out of this problem. And so we want to start at the school. So thank you for your time. Uh, if you want to sign up 
here for the pledge, and I'll be by the door if you want to just sign your name to it, put your title. That's great. Uh, another way you can help, obviously, we'll take your time, your volunteering, giving words of wisdom, supporting in any way this program, telling people about it. But also, there's a 100 print program for, for us to uh, raise incentives. Um, we have official prints, numbered prints, and if you wanted to donate $100, Mr. Saxon said, I could give you this one tonight. But if you want to call him and, and, and get one yourself to display proudly that you support the program, that's another way we're trying to build the incentives over time. We want to open it up to you know every student on a great number of people. So thank you for your time. I know that was probably a little bit over um, five minutes. But I do have a program outline for everyone if you want the information for what we're doing uh, as you leave tonight. So thank you for your time, everyone. Thank Appreciate you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, who do I make the check out to? Who do you make the check out to? Probably the Chillicothe City Schools. I should know that, right? Since I'm speaking. I would, I would call... Uh, we'll try. Yeah, not me. Not me. Don't, don't do that. You want that? I, would, uh, I would say Chillicothe City Schools. <coughs> we're, we're in the process of talking about uh, building uh, a certain fund um, to, to try um, to meet the tax requirements. And I know uh, Mr. Feeney spoke about that at one point as well, about uh, trying to build something that gives us uh, you know, the tax benefits as well to, for getting donations and, and helping people in that way. So, um, yeah, contact Mr. Saxon if, uh, if you want to help in any way. Who else would like to address council this evening? <clears throat> My name is Terry Williams, and I reside at 371 Flyland Flame here in the city. Um, last Wednesday, we had a little bit of conversation in the committee meeting about the paving going on back here behind the building. Um, have we figured out where we're going to pay for that yet? This committee is on appropriated general funds. You use unappropriated general Is there a reason that that appropriation request didn't come before the work got started? Well, the work kind of got pushed fed on us. We had originally wanted to just black top and stripe it, and we had money in the budget to do that. And uh, Mr. Chesler came by and made it quite clear that that was unacceptable and this be taken. And he had a lease agreement signed by me that uh, indicated that it would, would be paid. So we were legally obligated by that lease agreement to pay. But we're going to take money from the carryover to pay for that? Yes. Okay. I also just want to say I'm sad to hear that we're not going to keep the schedule that was announced previously because I'm not going to be able to be here tomorrow night uh, to discuss budget matters. But I just want to put in my two cents about the mayor's budget. I know last year, a week ago next week, the decision was made to try to balance our budget a little better and help the carryover by eliminating the EEO director position. And we all remember what fun that was. I certainly hope none of you are interested in doing that. I certainly hope that that's not going to come through in the budget. Plan. But I just want to bring up my frustration in seeing $30,000 go out the door in the general fund, unappropriated general fund money, when a year ago we were kicking and screaming trying to save that money by supposedly firing this person and having cost saved. It seems really disingenuous. And it's kind of frustrating as a citizen to see this uh, process happen in a way that we just get forced into spending twenty-five or thirty thousand dollars. You know, Tom Day sat here last Wednesday and couldn't even tell us how much it was going to cost, and we're already underway. That doesn't seem like a very good precedent, and I would hope that we wouldn't go ahead with projects like that until council has the decision to spend the money, because it's council's decision to spend our money, not Mr. Chesler, and not you or whoever sits in your chair. I'm sorry. I just do want to comment on the mayor's budget for tomorrow since you're not going to be here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Fee and I had a real brief uh, discussion, and it was brief because we decided that the EEO position should be an extra budget for tomorrow. I appreciate that, and I appreciate knowing that ahead of time. Um, it's very frustrating to know that we're sitting here trying to look at that forward cycle, trying to look at getting our carryover built up. And that option, of course, I'm glad to hear is off the table. But it looks like other options are going to have to be on the table because we're shelling out $30,000 to put paving down back here. That's really frustrating. I don't know how that decision was made. I don't know why council was all mouths agape on Wednesday. Had no idea that this was happening, particularly Ms. Patrick. 
that's really frustrating to see because there's a lack of communication going on, and I hope it gets changed January 2016. Anyone else like to address council this evening? Okay, we'll Seeing none, we'll close that and move to old business. No old business. How about petitions and correspondence, Mr. President? Uh, President Alamardo, I have nothing to report. Thank you. That brings us to new business. Mrs. Ames. Thank you, President Alamardo. On Friday, November 20th, is going to be the official start of the downtown holiday season with the downtown associates and the Light the Park. And it's going to begin at 6 p.m at the entrance to Yachtanji Park. There are lots of activities. The downtown associates are even having a snowflake pageant this year, something they're introducing new. Carriage rides, animals. Um, there are more downtown businesses decorating the windows this year, which is nice to see. Um, the commissioners have in, um, increased the number of lights that they're going to have on display. And we're working to get a couple more things in the park on display. Um, I know Mr. Tapman has been working with decorating the caboose, so there are lots of different groups that are working to make this happen, and we are still taking donations for Light the Park. Um, you can send it to the First Capital District, send it to the Chamber of Commerce, any amount that you can donate we would be glad to have. Um, we have had a um, couple uh, group that was going to participate is not, so we're a little bit short in that one area for that. But um, we've been getting a lot of response from people, new people, and this is really nice community support. And would ask anybody that would feel the uh, call to help us, we would like donations. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ames. This is me. I'd just like to add one thing to Nancy's comments about lighting. Um, the Pump House uh, Center for the Arts is also accepting donations, um, and they will accept cash donations or um, not just the plain Christmas lights that are on the strings. They, they've had several donations, but um, they have big plans to decorate the outside of the pump house and be a part of the, mm -hmm. of the light, the park. So if you have any extra lights or, or money, they'll gladly accept it. You can just send it out, drop it off to, to the pump house. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Hume. Anyone else? All right. I think that takes us to legislation. Roll up your sleeves. This should be good. <laughs> All right, item number one. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $5,983 to cover the cost of property insurance premiums for traffic controllers located within the city of Chillicothe and declare an emergency first reading. Mr. Tatman. I'd like to uh, waive that. Three read rule, please. Motion's been made to waive the three read rules, seconded by Mr. Florina. Roll call on the motion. Ames. Yes. Corker. Yes. Florina. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tatton. Yes. Cotchin. Yes. That motion carries. We'll have roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corker. Yes. Florina. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tatton. Yes. Cotchin. Yes. And the ordinance has passed. I'm going to pause for just a moment. We're going to pass this to Mr. Florina so that we, you on that side will have a chance to sign. Item number two. First reading of an ordinance accepting and appropriating $2,813.49 received as the city's proportionate share of the Rock Salt Antitrust Litigation Settlement Fund and declared an emergency. First reading. Mrs. Neal. I'd like to ask to waive the three new rule. That motion is seconded by Mr. Prohl. Roll call on the motion to waive the three read. Ames. Yes. Corker. Yes. Thurman. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. Motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corker. Yes. Thurman. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Prohl. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. And the ordinance has passed. Item number three. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $4,000 to fund code enforcement plan examinations for the remainder of the 2015 calendar year and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Chapman. I'd also like to request that we waive the three-read rule on this one. Seconded by Mrs. Ames. 
Roll call on the motion to waive the three read rule. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. That motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. And the ordinance has passed. Item number four. First reading of an ordinance accepting and appropriating $3,890.71 constituting hazardous material training reimbursement from the Ross County EMA and declaring emergency. First reading. Mr. This, Kroll. At this time, I request that we please waive the three read rule. Is there a second? Seconded by Mrs. Neal. Roll call on the motion to waive the three read. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Farima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Trotchin. Yes. And that uh, motion has carried. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Farima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Trotchin. Yes. Ordinance has passed. Item number five. First reading of an ordinance authorizing the hiring of one firefighter within the Chillicothe Fire Department in order to reduce the cost of overtime and declare an emergency. First reading. Mr. Pearl. At this time, I would like to waive the three read rule. Please. Seconded by Mrs. Neal. <coughs> motion to waive the three read rule. Ames. Yes. Parker. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Pearl. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. Motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tapman. Yes. Trutch. Yes. And the ordinance has passed. Item number six. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $23,000 to cover unanticipated expenses related to the extension of the Guernsey Crossing water line and to cover expenses for the remainder of calendar year 2015 and declare an emergency first reading. Mr. Pearl. As requested by Councilwoman Patrick, I would like to ask that we waive the three read rule. That's seconded by Mr. Trudgell. Roll call on the motion to waive the three read rule. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Trudgell. Yes. Motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Florima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tatman. Yes. Trudgell. Yes. And the ordinance has passed. Item number seven. First reading of an ordinance reallocating $1,191.96 for the replacement of a piece of stolen equipment from the Utilities Department and declaring an emergency. First reading. Item number eight. First reading of an ordinance appropriating $48,185.87 for patching and paving related to water main breaks and sewer repairs and repairs through the remainder of calendar year 2015 and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Crawford. As per Mrs. Uh, Patrick's request, I ask that we please waive the three read rule. Is there a second? A second by Mrs. Ames. Roll we'll call on the motion to waive the three read rule. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Green. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Touch. Yes. yes. Motion carries. Roll we'll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Green. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Chapman. Yes. Touch. Yes. And that ordinance has passed. Item number nine. First reading of an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Chillicothe, Ohio, to execute any and all documents in connection with granting a permanent easement to Columbia Gas of Ohio Incorporated. First reading. Item 10. First reading of an ordinance declaring certain city or certain duty firearms and <coughs> seized firearms as not needed and authorizing the safety service director to trade in said firearms simultaneously with the purchase of new duty firearms for use by the Chillicothe Fire and Police Department and declaring an emergency. First reading. Mr. Pearl. I would ask that we please waive the three read rule. Is there a second? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Farina. Roll call on the motion to waive the three read. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Farima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Patman. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. 
Motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Haynes. Yes. Parker. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Patton. Yes. Patton. Yes. Patton. yes. Ordinance has passed. Item 11. First reading of an ordinance extending the temporary employment of one seasonal part-time employee within the utilities department through December 31, 2015, and declaring emergency. First reading. Mrs. Gray. At this time, I would request that we waive the three-read That motion has been seconded by Mr. Trechel. Roll call on the motion to waive the three-read. Ames. Yes. Parker. Yes. Farima. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Patton. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. Motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Parker. Yes. Loring. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Patton. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. The ordinance has passed. Item number 12. First reading of an ordinance authorizing the auction of city-owned vehicles and equipment which are not needed for public use or are obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired in accordance with Ohio Revised Code Section 721.15 and declaring an, an emergency. First reading. This is me. I'd like to make a motion to waive the three reading rule. Seconded by Mrs. Gray. Roll call on the motion to waive the three read. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Yes. Trutchell. Yes. Motion carries. Roll call on the ordinance. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Kroll. Yes. Tatum. <coughs> yes. Trutchell. Yes. And that ordinance has passed. That completes legislation. Mrs. Ames. I move to excuse Mrs. Patrick. Seconded by Mrs. Gray. We'll call on the motion to excuse Councilman Patrick. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Lorena. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Patrick. Uh, Pro on me. <laughs> yes. Tatlin. <laughs> yes. Gotcha. <laughs> yes. Mr. Stan, stand excused. This is Gray. I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Seconded by Mr. Florina. We'll call on the motion to adjourn. Ames. Yes. Corcoran. Yes. Lorena. Yes. Gray. Yes. Neal. Yes. Cole. Yes. Patton. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. We are adjourned.